are you going to go around and uh, do the introductions and how long do we have? So one, two, um, three, four, let five, me, six, Let me seven. do a couple of things, if you don't mind, real quick. Yeah, we have um, 16, I wanna, so. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna acknowledge the, the new members and the re-signs. So Teresa um, Hamilton um, signed up for a second business, which is Beauty Counter. Mary Swartz sent out cards. Mary, are we gonna be able to see your face? Not today, my and, connection is terrible. Uh oh. And then rejoining members are Tessa Gorski with Homefront Essentials and Julie Vella with Touchstone Crystals and Kimberly uh, Hawkins Seffel with um, KH Seffel Jewelry and she's a gemologist mm -hmm. and a jewelry appraiser. Lori Messenger with Stride, and she captures monies that business leave on the table. I guess we could all use that, huh? Jody does that too, right? And then Betty Withrow with Riders Launch Pad, we um, signed up, and Ann Oda with uh, Rodan and Fields. So I just have a couple of, uh, you know, things to say about the direction we've been heading in since we, we, we got the shutdown orders and couldn't meet. And it's, you know, if you think about it, we're, we're living in the middle of a, um, a, a global shift, so to speak. Everything's kind of changing and shifting. And it brings a lot of intense growth and change. So that's been, been really good. And so what we've been offering, you know, what kind of the new thing is, the new, the new norm is self-education. You see education changing for our kids and, and all over. So we've been offering a lot of that here with PWN giving a lot of self-education, so to speak. If you think about it, you know, you know, most of us had traditional schooling, but a lot of us got where we are by self-education. Can, can, can I see a raise of hands of, if, if you guys have been self-educating yourself for quite a while now? Yeah, and, and we, wanna, we wanna keep that going. And it's been a lot of fun doing the, it's doing the Zooms and, and getting people from all over the United States and from other places too. Susan, where are you from? I'm from Canada. Canada, yes. So we're getting our Canadian friends. Um, we have um, one that's going to be speaking. Um, Roxanne will be speaking, um, I believe in September sometime, maybe October. I love her. She's very upbeat. So if you if you think about it, we're, we're heading in a really good direction. And what I'd like to, you know, there's a lot of people that wake up every morning that really are looking for answers and and you guys have a lot of answers so what i'm going to ask you to do is post on our facebook post what you're good at your knowledge um it doesn't have to be big long things it can be just little blurbs throughout the week to let people know you're there and that gives you more exposure also plus it keeps us connected and um and makes you um one of our knowledge people so um you know keep 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 that going. I'm really going to push that. I talked to Diane yesterday and I said, I'm really going to be pushing the, our interaction on our Facebook pages. Um, so with that being said, Marion, are you going to do the introductions? I can do them. Yes. I'd be happy okay. to. <laughs> awesome. I sent you a text, but I, I think you've been really busy today because usually you're you're texting back and yeah so um, no problem no problem so the icebreaker with with that being said um uh, my commentary to begin with i want the icebreaker to be if you could teach your passion what would you teach others about so it um marion you want to take that over all right very good well i'm going to go ahead and just call out your name and then you can do your introduction. You have 15 seconds to go ahead and introduce yourself and also uh, answer the icebreaker question. So I'll just start. I'm Marion Gellatly. I'm an image strategist and wardrobe coach for almost 30 years now. And uh, I love to help women with their visual communication. What would I teach my pa with my passion? Um, that's a hard one. Uh, how about hula lessons? <laughs> did, you say, did you say hula, hula lessons? Hula lessons, yes. Uh, hula, hula. 
<laughs> I didn't know you were a Hulu dancer. Well, uh, I, I would say long ago, let's put it that way. I'd have to brush up on it if I was going to teach it again. <laughs> That's awesome. If you're on the board, would you also let us know your board or committee positions too okay. as you introduce yourself? Okay, and I am on the board. I'm the vice president and I'm also PWN's woman of the year. So, yay. yay. So Megan, how about you? Good afternoon. My name is Megan Mertz. I am the business development coordinator for the local restoration company, Disaster Cleanup Specialist. And I am the PWN um, membership chair. And if I could teach my passion, I would, hmm, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> Re no reuse <laughs> um, extra recyclable things, I guess. I'm, I'm a big planter. So I think for me, it would be reusing things that are laying around the house and repurposing them for more life, like um, more planting. Wonderful. I like it. <laughs> That's a hard question, Teresa. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> okay, Sandra Collingwood. Oh, yes. <clears throat> I'm Sandra Collingwood. And my business is Super Spotter Spot Remover. And we'd like uh, to take a pot shot at your top pot. <laughs> I, uh, my passion is linguistics, languages, and uh, particularly English. So I'd like to teach people about the excitement of English. And it's wonderful to have a good vocabulary. Wonderful. Thank you, Sandra. Diane Glim. Hi there. Good afternoon. I'm Diane Glim. Um, I'm a PWN member for many years and I work at the Monterey County Weekly. I do advertising and help businesses succeed. And I, um, my passion is whales, dolphins, and porpoises and the environment that they live in. And um, I would love to teach people more protection of the ocean in order to save whales, dolphins, and porpoises, especially the vaquita porpoise. Thanks. Uh -huh. <laughs> we'll have to, you'll have to teach us about that someday, Diane. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and Lori, how about you? Me? Oh, okay. Yes. So, uh, Lori Black O'Jean, owner of Divorce with Dignity. And this question threw me because I thought, what are my passions? What is my passion? And I, I really am eclectic, you know. But I thought recently I've been really getting into history. So I just like history and the connectivity of, you know, like, you know, what we've been through. Do we learn from anything? Where are we going? Type of things. That in that way, I maybe could relate that passion to people yeah very good all right betty you're on mute <laughs> yeah that, that's because my puppy's whining in the background uh oh <laughs> but he stopped i think so i'm betty withrow of the writer's launch pad and i'm your speaker today you uh, for the priority the, the let's see person. somebody is talking yeah there you go thank you betty Go okay. Ahead. Okay. So I'll start over. Okay. Um, I, I'm Betty Withrow, uh, the owner and operator of the Writer's Launchpad. I'm a published author and uh, a, a prodigious blogger and a workshop leader and a speaker. I'm your speaker today. And if I were teaching people something from my passion, well, uh, this is this might be sound weird, but I love getting organized and creating a harmonious environment, regardless of where it is. So I would teach people massive simplicity and that you can do without just about everything and have fun doing it. You're going to have to prove that one to me, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> I learned it the hard way in the wilderness, so I can teach it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh. And Susan, would you like to introduce yourself? Susan. Sure. I'm Sue Das, and as I said previously, I'm from Ontario, Canada. I'm a courage coach because I believe that life shrinks or expands in direct proportion to our courage. And along that theme, what I would say is, is one of the passions of mine is to teach other people to choose courage over comfort if they want their life to change. 
And I will say that we are in the middle of a major storm here. So if I disappear, it's not because I don't like you. <laughs> it's because something happened to the internet. I hear you. Would you like to share what your passion is and what you'd like to teach us? I would, courage. I, my passion is, is, is courage. The courage. I, have, I have other passions too. One is photography where I really like to take photographs of things other people miss so that I encourage people to see the things that are, that are unseen and really learn to appreciate them. So I take pictures of little mushrooms in the woods and raindrops on, on leaves and that kind of thing. And I would say that for all of us, for our lives, that, that sense of mindfulness, if, if we can slow down enough to appreciate things that we don't normally even see, that can change things for us. Beautiful. Thank you. And Gay Friedman? My name is Gay Friedman, and or I'm now going around as Dr. G, the happiness coach. And <laughs> I'm on the um, membership committee with Megan. I teach women how to create a vision for the life that they want and how to create a path to achieve it. And my um, passion is <laughs> making people happy. What I love doing is uh, running special events and workshops where women come and act crazy and run around and have fun. So that's something that I really enjoy doing. Sounds like we need a retreat here soon. <laughs> <laughs> and Jody. Um, Joey, you mean me? Jody. Oh, there's a Jody. Jody oh. Roe. Oh. You're next, Joey. <laughs> Joey and Jody. My name is Jody Roe, and I'm the technology chair for PWN. Um, my business is Worthy Ideal Consulting. I um, support entrepreneurs who are ambitious business owners, and I offer full-service digital marketing, web design, and sales training. And everything I do aims to make my clients successful and more profitable. Um, and my passion has always been um, the, the power of the mind and the unseen world. And so I, one of my passions, the thing I love to do is teach people how to access their higher mental faculties and use their intuition and their creative genius um, in a really uh, unique way for them that uh, supports their, their life. They're just their life force and builds their life force. So Beautiful. I teach a lot of stuff like that. Beautiful. Now, Joey. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. So I'm the founder of 113 Branding. I had a very unique background. I worked in Hollywood for 15 plus years and I worked with high level mentors that taught me the importance of growing your visibility and influence. I do this with entrepreneurs and creative types through branding and marketing, through strategies and content build out. And my unique um, passion is that I make very intricate shadow box art. And so I'd love to teach other people how to do that because mm. it's a great way of creating a timeline of memories and vision boards for yourself. And then you get to hang it and it's really pretty. <laughs> oh, very interesting. Thank you. Gina. Joey, I did not know that about you and I have known <laughs> you for so long. I'm Gina Estrada with Estrada Associates and Espresso Brain. I built my financial services practice by becoming a networking expert, author, and speaker. If you're wondering why I have two names, it's because I have a securities license and everything would have to run through my compliance department for me to do all the networking stuff I do. So I created Espresso Brain and it's an approved outside business activity where now I just funnel everything through that. So if You've been confused, that's probably why. <laughs> and my passion is getting up at 5 a.m. and doing a morning practice. Mm. I cannot say enough about it. It has changed my life. I've been practicing solidly since July 1st, 2015. And when I was diagnosed with cancer, it gave me a place to put the cancer. When I have had all kinds of setbacks, Facts. It just gave me a place to put that and I just keep going forward. And on September 7th, as part of that morning routine, I wrote a book and it's going to be released. Yay. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Teresa Reem.
Hi there, I'm Teresa Ream, your 2020 president, and I'm also the president of um, Disaster Cleanup Specialists, Flooring America's Floor Store USA, and Cypress Cabinets and Building Design. Um, my, oh gosh, you know, I'm kind of doing it today. I'm kind of doing my passion. I love to help women. I love to uh, help people that are new in business because we everything that's could happen in a business has happened to us. And so I just, I love coaching. I love coaching people in business and um, kind of doing that right now. So I'm living my dream. Thank you. you. Are. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, let's see, you're moving around a little bit here. So if I miss you, make sure you raise your hand eventually. We'll go to Julie King. Hi, I'm Julie King. I'm a business and estate planning attorney and also the co-owner of Alliance Career Training, which uh, does business and career training in software and um, all kinds of other business related uh, areas. Um, since I work all the time, <laughs> I don't really have an outside passion. What I do in my free time is um, I actually do free seminars on estate planning to let people know how much money they can save. Most people don't want to talk about what happens when someone passes away, but um, then they get stuck in this situation where they're spending a lot of money and waiting a year to get the inheritance. And I talk to people about how they can save all that time and money. I make 10 times more money when they don't plan. And so I'm out there telling people they need to plan. <laughs> so it's not in my best interest, it's in everybody else's. Well, thank you for doing that for all of us. All right, let's go on to Laura Beth. Hi, I'm Laura Beth Mesmer. Um, I, was a, um, I was a member a while back and I've rejoined and I'm so happy that I did. It's good to see some familiar faces and nice to meet the rest of you. Um, I work with a, an organization called Stride Solutions and what we do, we're a national cost recovery firm and we are a, um, we go in and we do um, analysis of different parts of businesses and find where they have left money on the table through tax, state, and local um, in, uh, cash and tax incentives. And, um, and we, this is all money that's, that is there, so it's, they don't have to qualify for it. They qualify for it simply by it being there. It's really very cool. And right now in this environment, we're able to help small businesses stay open and restaurants that are closing and that sort of thing by going in and finding this money for them and helping them give them cash that, that adds to their bottom line. It's very cool. Um, my passion is, um, uh, I'm like, I, I, I'm like Julie, I work a lot. And so I don't have an outside passion. I'm my mom's full time caregiver. And that's a passion. Mm -hmm. Can't teach that to anyone. But it's my personal passion. Um, I have a passion to help female veterans who've been sexually assaulted and, and the CEO of GI Josie, which is a nonprofit for them. So um, to teach anyone that I don't know, I would encourage people to step up and help the women and they if they if you have something that you want to share with them like betty's one of our directors she directs right on so um i would highly encourage if you have anything that you think that they can um that they can benefit from uh give me a shout out and happy to put you on the put you on the agenda thank so you thanks. Laura, happy Beth. to be back really happy yes, to be back happy to have you back mm -hmm. thank you josephine hey. I'm Josephine Hannon, but you can call me Jose. Otherwise, I feel like I'm in trouble. <laughs> I didn't do it. It was my sister. Um, you know, one of my favorite one of my favorite quotes is from Virginia Woolf, which is, "For most of history, anonymous was a woman." and especially not just women, but also women of color, right? And, and so my, my commitment to the world is to shine the brightest spotlight on women entrepreneurs. I want it to be hotter than ever for people to think of women first, buy from women first, and also remember us, repeat us, and think of our signature brands first. So that's, that's what I do with women entrepreneurs. Thank you, Jose <laughs> and Mercy. You're, You're muted. muted. Uh, okay. There you go. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mercy Nolan. 
I am a 24 year career financial advisor and registered principal for Crown Capital Securities. I'm also the founder and CEO of Very Diva Women's Business Networking Group, recently a published author. And um, my greatest passion has actually been combined and into these two activities of mine. Um, and the other one that's non-work related is Paris. Paris is the city of my soul. It embraced me when I was broke and broken. And uh, I talk about Paris all the time. Um, there, was a, there was a quote that said, America is my country, but Paris is my hometown. So on all my social media network, my alter ego came from Paris. That's it. Thank you, Mercy. Nice to get to know you. And Ingrid, how about you? Hi, everybody. Sorry for the poor lighting. But um, so my name is Ingrid, and I graduated college with a degree in business administration with a focus on accounting. Uh, last May, I was just trying to figure out how to get my career started, and then the pandemic hit. So I've had a lot of time to figure out what exactly I want to do with my life and what my passions are. And one of the things I definitely want to do is use my business acumen and my accounting skills to uh, help and empower small businesses owned by women. At some point in my life, I do see myself going through the, you know, business consulting or financial advi advising route. And I would definitely want to help women particularly. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Mary Schwartz. Hello. And happy Thursday, Mary Swartz, and I'm a relationship marketing strategist. And my um, main goal is basically to help entrepreneurs and businesses make a meaningful connection, um, be able to connect with their clients on a different level and gain and retain uh, referrals and more clients. And I think my passion right now, I have a few, but I think my passion right now would be teaching people about um, animal rescue. Oh. Um, I do a lot of with animal rescue and in the Central Valley. And so that would be something I would teach people, I think. Okay. And Mary was our speaker this month. A great presentation, Mary. And Thank then you. lastly, we have a phone number here, 831-224-9847. Uh, if you want to take yourself off of mute and introduce yourself, we'd love to do that. And if not, that's okay. Okay, well, I think we'll move on then. Did I get everyone? Is there anyone that I have missed? If so, raise your hand. No? All right, very good. I'll turn it back to Gina then. Hi, I get the pleasure of introducing our spotlight speaker today. She has five minutes. Her name is Marion. Delatley of Powerful Presidents. She presents. She is a certified image master and visual branding expert. She served her clients for over 20 years and guides them on building their visual presence and wardrobe. That's so important. We kind of let it slide a little bit during this time, but guess what? We're going back. So we're going you're back. Not off the hook. <laughs> you're not off the hook. Marion believes your needs change as your life changes, and 2020 has certainly been a year of change. So Marion has shifted her business this year by helping clients develop a stronger professional presence on their Zoom calls. She makes sure what you're wearing, as well as your background strongly convey who you are and what you do. She, excuse me. She is also deeply passionate about guiding women to gain style confidence and she's now offering many of her services virtually. She also teaches master class and has experiential program launching on September 15th called Style Shift, Refining Your Unique Style. Welcome Marion. And I'll time you. Thank you. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. So let me pull that up. Oops. All right, well, thank you. Um, my passion in working with every client I work with is to say to them and to accomplish being the best version of you. 
And that's my mantra, be the best version of you, no matter who you are, or where you are in this particular uh, point in your life or in particular point of the year. And that is because you are your most valuable asset. And anything you do for yourself is an investment in you. And as women, oftentimes we end up taking care of other people before we take care of ourselves. But I want you to look at your, your visual communication as an investment in getting people to know who you are. So how about giving yourself some attention this year? Now, you know that we make first <laughs> impressions, okay? And we're making lots of first impressions, whether it happens to be on Zoom calls today or whether it happens to be meeting someone in person. Um, the thing that I'd like to say is that your nonverbal communication speaks. And it speaks really um, about a lot of things. So how do you want to represent yourself? I think that's very important. How do you want to feel? How do you want others to feel when they're in your presence? And your nonverbal communication will tell them a story. So here are some examples, whoops, of style and grooming speaking. So who is this woman, you might say, when you meet her for the very first time? That's usually the, the first reaction. Who is this woman? Well, who is this woman? Well, guess what? They're the same woman with a very different message based on their grooming and based on the clothing that they're wearing. So you can see that it's very powerful. Your professional image is very powerful. So why should you care? Well, because it can be your differentiator. And it's totally within your control, and it doesn't take a lot of money to make a shift. So why do I think, or what do I think the benefits of a strong visual presence are? Number one, it's a very effective communication tool, just as you saw before. Um, it provides a stronger connection with people. So you can convey who you are, and people can connect, connect to your message. And that provides stronger engagement, it builds trust and confidence. And when you're feeling confident about your visual presence, guess what? You end up having more fun. And the best part, I think, is that you get to express exactly who you are. So I want to just invite you to come and join my Rocking Your Powerful Presence Facebook page. Um, you can go ahead and just you know, put that in your search bar and find us there and join. Um, so uh, uh, Gina mentioned that I'm doing a lot virtually. So I am doing first impression consultations virtually. I'm doing virtual styling, wardrobe building and online shopping. I'm doing a lot of classes and I just wanna invite you to go ahead and schedule a 30 minute complimentary consultation. And you can do that by going to my website, which I'll give you here in a moment. This is the class that's starting in September called Style Shift, Refining Your Unique Style. I'm finding a lot of women right now during the COVID are really questioning their style. Nothing in the closet seems to look appealing to them any longer. So this is a way to really get clarity around that. And here's my contact information, my phone number, my email address, and my website, powerful-presence.com if you'd like to schedule that consultation. So thank you. Thank you, Marian. That was really good. Learned a lot about your business there. I know we learned little bits and pieces, but that was that was nice. It kind of pulled it all together. Thank you. And you're right on time too. All right. Next, we have our speaker. How to write for impact in your business. Betty Withrow is the owner and operator of the Writer's Launchpad. As an author, blogger, workshop leader, and speaker, she is committed to the art of crafting, of art and the craft of writing. She works with top professionals in their fields to develop marketing materials, training courses, edit books, blogs, and websites. Betty is a writer's coach, and she really is. She, when you get stuck, she helps you get out of your own head. She gives support wherever it is needed to get your project completed. In today's busy marketplace, it is crucial to find new ways to highlight your expertise in order to call in more business and increase your earning power. 
Welcome, Betty. <laughs> okay. Hi. Thank you, Gina. That was a great welcome. And uh, thanks to everybody in PWN and all of our guests for being here today. I am, I'm amped. Okay, so I'm going to share with you today what I call the three golden apples for successful business writing. That's uh, how you write for impact in your business is by using simple distilled version of the scientific method to craft a, an amazing message that does what you want. But first, I want to tell you about something that happened 50 years ago when I was a senior in high school. Now I know I don't look it, I was five. I've always been a language person. As a kid, I used to lug around bags of books everywhere, riding my bike up and down the hill to the library, hauling the dictionary to lunch so that I could study it and win the spelling bee. Yes, I was the weirdo who thought that diagramming sentences is fun. <laughs> So I, I, I'm steeped in language. I love language from the core of my being. That's who I am, it's what I do. And when I got into my high school, a top ranked academic school, I set my intention to get into Mrs. Shelby's class. There were a lot of English teachers and Mrs. Shelby stood head and shoulders above everyone else. Her class, Advanced Composition and Rhetoric, was the centerpiece of the entire curriculum and you had to have a straight A average to get into the class. So I set my intention to go ahead and do that and I took every English class that was offered that I, I could fit into my schedule, independent study and immersion classes in different foreign languages. I pushed myself, I excelled, I made the cut, and I got into advanced composition and rhetoric, taught by the venerable Mrs. Shelby, who was revered for her knowledge of language, her standards, and her character. So now I was feeling pretty confident. I had pulled it off, right? I was there, um, I won 24 out of our class of 750 to be in this class, the last one that Mrs. Shelby would teach before retiring. Little, little did I know what I'd gotten myself into. I thought my other teachers were tough. Well, Mrs. Shelby loaded on the work. She gave us massive reading assignments every night. We had to write voluminous amounts every single day, and there was a quiz every day. Her formidable intellect and her commitment to extracting a standard of excellence from her students made her a guiding light for all of us. Nobody who was in that class that year will ever forget what we went through. If you got an A in Mrs. Shelby's class, you had to earn it. And she was a guiding light, as I say, and her, my time with her changed me forever. She was tough and she was also deeply compassionate. She cared for us on the deepest possible level. She wanted us to be the best writers that we could be so we could be successful. She would never allow any sloppy language or thinking to slip by. How often she reminded us that truth lies in fine distinctions and how often I've remembered that as I've moved through life. She inspired in me the desire to be a writing professional, a published author, an editor, and a contributor to the discourse of our times. And then after school got out, life happened. And I got caught up in the times, the early 1970s, a time of upheaval and change, when we were all swept into events we could not have foreseen. And I was certainly among those who had that experience. And I also had some beautiful and, and wonder inspiring and, and joyful experiences like moving onto a homestead and having a family, a fulfillment of a lifelong dream. 
So even though I wasn't doing the work I do today of being a book coach and a published author, writing copy, supporting businesses, coaching writers, and publishing consistently online and offline, I used the tools and skills that I had learned to create success in other kinds of business and different areas of life. But I wasn't using the full array of tools that I had learned. And this gave me a deep feeling that something was missing. That was a feeling that I ignored for many years. Can anyone else relate? Well, time moved on. The kids grew up and I began to change. I had still been writing the whole time. Life in the wild can be rough. And so I would write something out, put it in a notebook, and then go back to tending the needs of the family and of the land. Now, as I found that that quiet feeling was becoming harder to ignore, I took up writing in a more serious way. I started some book outlines. I started a blog. And I reached out for teachers and mentors who could put me in touch with the new tools and skills that were now available. Something in me was waking up. I got more and more into writing. And the turning point came through a series of tragic events surrounding my mother's last illness when I had to change the way I was living and what I was doing with my life. It was deeply disturbing and it took all my attention on every level. I used that time of disturbance and transformation and change to push myself into a new way of being. I took up even more writing and in a torrent of words, I wrote my first book, Prevail, and I published it. Being a published author changed everything for me. It gave me the courage to start a new business, the Writer's Launchpad, to support people in their desires to put together their books, their content, and make their messages known in the world. I know that even though Mrs. Shelby isn't here with us today, she would be proud of her one-time student that she taught so diligently and with so much knowledge. I still feel her spirit. Every day when I wake up, I know she's there. With the Writer's Launchpad, I use templates and questionnaires to help people develop the content that they need so that I can understand how to support them most effectively. Whether you have a book or a blog, or you want to write online articles, or you have marketing copy that you need to develop, the Writer's Launchpad has the tools to make it happen. Now, I promised you some golden apples, and here they are. Apple number one is to speak in the language of your marketplace. Each business environment has a different type of communication that is used. For example, when I'm writing copy for someone who's working with corporations and agencies, I use a different type of language than I would for a business that focuses on personal services. It's very important to make sure that you are at the level that your prospect is communicating on and that you reach them in the place that they are. Apple number two is to highlight your skills and experience so that you present yourself as the best possible choice. I'm pretty sure that everybody who's on this call has more than one skill set. Look at who it is that you want to reach and highlight your strongest asset in the communication. That will make them understand that you understand what it is that they need and that you're ready for them. Apple number three is to focus on outcomes. What are people to expect when they work with you? What outcomes can you predict as a result of using your products or services? Be very specific. We all know that the big question in the customer's mind is, what's in it for me? When you answer that question effectively, you've gone ahead and asked for the sale and you're, you've com completed the cycle of communication. So now I'm gonna recap and I'm also gonna post in the Facebook group a, uh, a, a, uh, a recap of this entire three golden apples thing. 
And also there's a worksheet there that you can use to fill it out so you can see how these three golden apples apply to you and your business. So apple number one, speak in the language of your market. Apple number two, present yourself as the best possible choice using examples of things you have already accomplished. Apple number three, focus on outcomes. Again, being very specific about what a prospect can expect as a result of working with you. Now, I have, I have, a, I have something fun that you can do that only takes one minute and it's the simplest thing that there is, but it will, it will be helpful to you in developing content that works for you. Get an index card and a pen and set the timer on your phone for one minute. Do a word dump. When the timer goes off, put down your pen and look at the words that you've written. If a word came up more than once, that means it's more important than the others. You'll start to see relationships between the different words and patterns that come up as, as your consciousness has moved through this exercise. Now, when you first do it, a minute's gonna seem like a long time, but it's really only a minute. For example, if I, I'll read to you what I wrote the last time that I did this exercise. Words like this, author, support, blog, book, coaching, content, systems, topics, momentum, and the like. When you go back into this, this stream of words, you'll see that each of them has a relationship to one of the three golden apples. So you can use them to create topics. So uh, as an example, if I were using Apple number one, speak in the language of your marketplace, I could create a topic that was something like systems to create momentum for your content using topics that support your business. Whether you do this every day or you, or you only do it once, you can see that letting your ideas out in a stream in this way helps you understand more about where you're really coming from and what's really important in your business communication. If you do this every day, you'll have, if, if you do it every day for seven days, you can have seven topics or more if you use all three of the golden apples. And remember too that you don't have to go it alone. You can use this to begin to develop your copy. And whether you work with me or with a different copywriter, you'll have the topics beginning to appear so that you have more of a clear idea of what you want your content to do and how you'll establish effective communication with those who read what it is that you have to say. So I, we still have some time and I'd like to open up for some questions if people have questions about what I've, what I've put out. But first, one more time about the golden apples, okay? So now I'm gonna boil it down to three words, one word for each, dog, each apple, okay? Language, choice, outcomes. So the language of your marketplace, you as the best possible choice, the outcomes that you promise. That's what will make your writing effective and give you the impact in communication when you clearly understand how to present yourself in the language that your customer uses, highlighting yourself as the best possible choice from your expertise, and you can promise results. They know you're for real and they'll be ready to hire you. So who, does anyone have questions for me? Come on, <laughs> come on, you guys. And Gay has a question, and so does Mercy. Okay, uh, I don't, I can't see who's who's. Okay, Gay, do you want to ask your question? Yeah. So I would love to write a blog, but there are so many blogs out there. I mean, as many stars in the sky. How can you um, write a blog and rise above the noise, or you know, stand out in that field? Um, the way to do it is by developing content that's absolutely true to you. 
and I have a system to, for developing blog topics that are uh, completely relevant and in a stream with where, you know, with what you have to offer. That's the way that you stand out is by offering consistent and superior content. I mean, it's something that really has value for your readers. Then you develop a loyal readership and they will be there for you. And we have Mercy. Thank you. Betty, I, as you know, I've discussed this with you before. I'd like to invite you to do a class for my Very Diva Women's Business Networking Group. And uh, I'd like to include this because I, I think effective business writing, one of the two things I believe that people, successful people can cultivate is people skills and communication skills. A lot of people, uh, not probably our generation, the younger generation, are very haphazard about their writing communication skills. And so I totally get what you're saying about focusing on your target audience. And how long will it take for you to deliver this as a workshop? Well, you and I are going to have to talk about that offline first. Because I have to. I have to. I, I'm, I'm on to collaborate with you. Okay, you know, thank you for your invitation. Uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. I'm, I'm going to get back to you about this for sure. I think your skills and your expertise deserves a far, far wider audience because I think it's, you are underused. <laughs> and now we will overuse you. <laughs> thank you, Betty. Thank you for sharing your amazing knowledge. Uh, Susan has a question. Yes. Eddie, you talk about for blogging consistent and superior uh, content. Yeah. I'm just wondering if which of those, let's think how to phrase this. When you say consistent, is there a, a, a frequency that works better in your opinion, weekly, monthly, bi, you know, bi-monthly? Um. I think that it, 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 the most important thing is to have it be something that you can be comfortable with. Uh, I personally put out a blog every two weeks. And to be perfectly honest, I write it and schedule it six months to a year out. Like right now, I'm working on my March 2021 posts. Because in writing a blog, I, I put out evergreen content that will always have value. And I take the pressure off myself by, ha by using my own system. And, um, but, you know, for some people, writing a blog every month is sufficient. Uh, I, I personally, I recommend once every two weeks because then people know that you're going to be there. But actually, one of my favorite blogs it comes out every week and I wait for her to, to come on because she comes on at a certain time every week. And if she's not there at that time, I wonder what's going on. Is she okay? So, you know, that, that tells you that I have a rapport with this person, even though we've never met. And I, I, the consistency is, is key to really having the trust there with your audience. But even more than that is having a superior content that makes them go, oh, I want to open this email. Because, you know, if you have a blog, blog broadcast on your autoresponder system, then it goes to the people who have signed on your list and they, you know, and you're there in their inbox, like this woman I was just talking about and, and like what I have in my system. So that, I have a bit of a fight between, I normally post weekly, but there's times where I felt like, I actually don't have something good enough to post. So those two things, superior content and consistency kind of fight with each other. Uh -huh. and I like don't know whether to just post it anyway so that I can be consistent or not post it and be inconsistent, but save it for when I have uh, better content. Uh, I, I'd say go ahead and post it anyway, because you already have a readership, Sue. I read whatever you put on Joey's page all the time, and I love what you write. So even though you may not think it's as good as you can do, you're, the, you're your inner critic. That's your inner critic going, wait a minute, you know, do I really say that? You know, and I get that too. So I, every writer has that. It's just a thing that, you know, it, it comes up. And 
you know, realistically for me as an author support person, one of my very favorite things is when a person realizes that their message is bigger than they thought as we're going through their work together. And they suddenly, the lights come on and they go, wait, my inner critic was wrong. You know, so go ahead and post it, Sue, even if you don't think it's good enough. You know, done is better than perfect. Thank you. Yeah, that answers my question. Yeah. Josephine. Yeah. Um, so first thing, I'm, I'm so happy to be here, Betty, totally cheering you on. Um, I do have a background at, um, in advertising and copywriting, so I know good stuff when I hear it. And I am just blown away by the quality and superiority of the information that you've given us today. She's, she's the real deal. Um, so Betty, I, I love it. So that was my first feedback. Um, and then my second, my second thing is I'm curious, like when you're working with people, are you writing with them? Are you writing for them? Are you ghostwriting? Is it, you're giving them prompts? Like how do you actually work with, uh, with your clients? Well, it depends on what the project is. You know, for example, there, if a, an author has a manuscript that they've worked on and they know it's great and they're sick and tired of working on it, they hand it over to me and I polish it up for them and finish the job. I love doing that. I also do things like the, someone I'm working with right now who's very busy expanding his business. He sends me a bunch of information and I write his copy and then we go back and forth until it's perfect and put it on his website. So, and I do, I have done rewrites, you know, for like, for a mystery writer who hates grammar and syntax, but has beautiful images and wonderful, uh, wonderful action steps. So re I do rewrites for her. That's called ghostwriting, I guess. And so it, it all depends on what the project is. I, I, there's no one size fits all thing because no, there's no two writing projects alike, Joe's. You know, we're, it, it, each one is different. Um, Betty, I just, I just wanted to say, I've heard you give several presentations, this by far the best, like you upped your game hugely. I mean, what a, what a difference. Oh. I applaud you. I thought this was wonderful. And I have personally used Betty's services. Um, I have another editor that I hired when I lived in Fresno. And then when I came here, I wanted someone else to work with that could work with me closely. And my girl back in Fresno had some, um, she had a child was abducted and they were hot on the trail to get the kid back and they finally did. So that, so she had a little bit of a sabbatical and I filled it with Betty and we hammered out and got it pretty much done. And now it's in the hands of the uploading gods, I guess. <laughs> so we'll see, but Betty, awesome job. Thank you. Uh, Joey, Joey had a question. Well, but I, I appreciate you sharing about how you've pivoted in life and that you're now rocking and rolling your passion from in high school and now you're doing it now. I think that's such an encouraging story around because we've all had a Mrs. Shelby and we've all made right and left turns, right? So I really appreciate that. But I also want to, um, I also hire Betty and she's helped me tremendously with clients like I'll do the copy but then Betty will make sure it's perfect because that is not my 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 gig so I highly recommend that you hire her um, and then she makes sure that she doesn't change the voice which I think is really important because I've had other people that change my voice or will change things change the voice on me um, but Betty in terms of your apples so apple one apple two apple three every time you sit down and you attack a topic are you applying all three apples or do you apply one or two or how does that work? No, oh, I, I apply all three of them because the, the apples are the modern version of the classic system of communication that I had to swallow whole and do all the hard work so that everybody else here doesn't have to do it. Like, it, uh, you know, like the, it comes from the, the classic art of rhetoric, the, uh, the, the, the crafting of a message has all three of those, no matter what you're writing about. It's like, how are you going to communicate with your audience? Who is your audience? And what is it that you have to say? And it goes through all these different layers, but there's three central principles or, or um, uh, 
well, I guess that you call them, I would call them principles, but they're not really, they're, uh, they're, they're mechanical things. It's a scientific thing. So yes, I use them all every time. Um, let's see, it, and how can I elaborate on that so it makes sense? <laughs> Or not. I mean, uh, I, I really prize simplicity, like I said earlier, you know, my passion, because uh, it helps you through massive transitions like the one I've been going through in the last few years. It's like, wow. Betty, wow. I can see your, um, your golden apples helping on just, um, because not all of us here are, you know, going to, looking to write a book, but we do have to do different business writings and to call attention to ourselves and different things. Right. So I think these three, the language choice and outcomes can really do good in smaller sound bites um, to help a, 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 those of us that aren't professional writers are looking to write, write books too. So I like yeah. that. Right. It, that, that's true. I mean, they, they apply for any kind of writing, even if it's just one paragraph. It's like when you were in elementary school, they said, use a topic sentence, you know, and then all, all the different ways to develop a message. They all come from that same three golden apples. And yeah, it, I mean, everybody can write a book. A lot of people think it's too hard to do, but there you can work up to it. You know, like uh, one of the people I work with had a huge blog sequence and he wanted to turn it into a book so i worked with him to put the page flow together and keep his voice consistent and uh and you know like make it a valuable book that could stand on its own or someone else who had a, a series of video transcripts you can start with that too you can start by doing videos get the transcripts and then change the tone of the language back to that of a book which is what i did for one of my clients and it's, uh, so there's a lot of different ways to go about it. As having a blog is a great way to start a book. Just go ahead and, and, and blog. But not everybody wants to write a book. I mean, I get that. And yeah. it's, uh, so what for any kind of business communication, it's the same three principles for sure. Um, Betty, do you have the next wave that's happening? Like the, the blog wave came in. Is there something else that's coming down the pike um, as people shorten things up or get themselves out there that you can see coming around the corner? Uh, I think people are trying to say that blogging is over, but I don't think that's real. I, I think that blogging is, is possibly more important than ever because people feel so disconnected from this experience that we're all having, you know, like nothing is the way it was a few months ago and what's it going to be like and so on. So people are looking to read people that, that they're invested in for their point of view. Um, what would be the next thing that I can see coming? Um, well, video blogging was being really pushed and I never really got into it, but um, I guess that for some people, video blogging would be the thing. Uh, what would be next? That's a really great question, Teresa. I can't say I know the answer. <laughs> if you think of anything, you can uh, put it on our Facebook and let us know. Yeah, keep in touch with on our on our Facebook of different ideas you have. We'd love to more of expounding on it and and things. So, yeah. Jody, one last question from you, and then we'll move on. We're we're right at our time, but we have just a quick announce announcements. Thank you, Betty, for for doing this. I'm actually sitting on a number of books. Uh, by my aunt and my father. They are both passed away. A series that they started and really didn't get out there. They got created, but they really didn't get pushed out there. Um, and they could use maybe a, a rewrite, but um, do you work with people like in families who have authors who didn't go forward with a lot of their books? Now my aunt was a, is a famous children's author, but my dad co-authored with her a number of books, but um, that also might entangle legal issues as well, but it's something that I've been sitting on for a number of years and I want to move on it. Well, that's, I, I could certainly take a look at that. That sounds like a fascinating project actually, Jody. You know, you and I should talk about it because I, I do that, uh, I'm, I'm working with someone right now on her memoir and she has it all written down by hand in longhand and then she's putting it into word documents little by little so you know whatever form it's in I, i'd be happy to talk with you about how we might be able to move that forward that sounds really like a, that would be a, a fine thing to do okay sounds good. awesome so we're going to move into any announcements and i know joe i know gina and 
Megan have a, a couple of quick announcements for you and let you go then. Go ahead, Megan. Gina? Oh. oh, you want me to go? Okay, just want to remind you that our next program meeting is on Wednesday, September 2nd at 5.30. And six o'clock. Oh, six o'clock. I can't <laughs> say the old time. Six okay. o'clock. Gina Renee Palladay will be bringing us the secret to up-leveling your business and skyrocketing. Your success is written all over your face. That sounds fun. Hope to see you all there. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> And Megan? So uh, I just, uh, just show of hands for the new members. Have you guys seen the new app, Wild Apricot? How are, how are we looking? Wild Apricot? Anyone heard of it? Okay. Well, yeah, thank you. Uh, Gay and I are working behind the scenes trying to get all of our members on the Wild Apricot app. It's awesome. Oh, you can... Am. You can sign up for events right at the tip of your fingertips. You have all your directory information from every member that's current. And then also you can use that same directory for finding things, whether it be flooring, real estate. So it's a great thing to have and you'll never lose the link. It's all right there. So um, get with me or Gay and we'll go over, over it with you. Yeah, you really want to use that technology. It's so simple. And just right on your phone, you can pull up people. You can type in like um, realtors or whatever, and it'll pull up the names under it too. So it's really cool. Marion. If anyone would like to showcase like what I did today, we have only two spots left for the year, one in September and one in October for our coffee talks. So please do get in touch with me right away if you'd like to get slotted in. Awesome. Awesome. I just have a quick testimonial for um, Mary Schwartz. Um, we went to Wyoming and this is what her business does. She sends out cards to your clients, very personalized, you can see, and with a really personal note on the back. So um, just wanted you to get a visual on that. That's really cool. Thank you, Mary. Um, it, it's awesome. Uh, do we have we have time for just, if you have a quick, quick, quick testimonials. Anybody want to throw one out there? I have one. Okay, Megan? Uh, every Monday, we have our Monday morning email. We keep in contact with um, our vendors and our clients. And, you know, sometimes Christine Cristobal likes to answer. I like to see her name in there. But Sandra Collingwood actually interacted, and it was a really sweet surprise to be behind that info email instead of my own and to just to have that collaboration of both PWN and, you know, for Super Spotter. So it was just a really, really nice moment. So that's all. Way to go, Sandra. And then a uh, powerful presence uh, for Marion. If, you know, I took her a lot of her different courses and I used to get on my treadmill and her voice was so soothing. And I just listened to them over and over. And, and then when they were getting ready to end, I beg her to give me an extension. And she, she would always give me extensions to keep watching. I'd watch them like 40 times every time I was on the treadmill. So really try her out. She's great. Thank you. So with that, it's time to get on with the rest of our lives, and we will see you on September 2nd. Be there, be square. Bye-bye. <laughs>